Hey y'all, it's Betsy with Happily Ever After Etc. And welcome back to another garden project. So today I'm doing a long awaited project. I've been waiting so long to do this ever since we put in the shed and the raised beds, started working on that project. My mom and brother bought me this bistro set for my birthday and it came this little bench. I wasn't sure what to do with it, but as I started designing this part of the yard, I decided right in between the tree and this oak leaf hydrangea, like this is the vista that you see when you are looking down this side of the garden. And right now it is just lawn and then woods. And there's nothing necessarily wrong with that, but I want somewhere to sit on that side of the garden and just take it in, especially when I'm working. I really enjoy just kind of pausing taking breaks in the garden without going inside. So that was a perfect spot for my new bench. And I don't want to have to put in, well, I do want, but I don't want to be encouraged to put in an entire garden bed on that side of the path. Cause you know, it, it would never end. We just keep putting garden beds in everywhere until the entire acre was garden beds. And this is not my forever house. So I don't want to do that. So instead I decided to put in a couple plants behind the bench that will get big, that will have beautiful blooms and that will give us just a nice, pretty soft place behind the bench, little bit of shade and a nice place to stop your eye. So I picked up two Texas sages. I will put some pictures up on the screen. These have really pretty kind of purpley pink lavender lilac-y kind of blooms, but they have this beautiful silvery blue colored leaf. I will show you close up. Behind those, I have a Rose of Sharon. This guy gets extra tall and has beautiful strawberry smoothie blooms. So let me take you over there. We're just planting those three things today. This is going to be a quick, easy thing. It's supposed to rain for the next four days. And my brother to help me finish clearing all the sticks right here and putting them in the raised beds. So from there, just a second. Still have all of these leaves that I wasn't sure if I would need. I don't. Um, and my yard guy will mow all of that and then this will become clean. This part of the yard is kind of a mess. Again, I want your eye to be stopped here and not see as much of this, but still need to come in here and weed. The long guy will mow this and then it will be a lot cleaner. But because it is going to rain for the next four days, I want to get these in the ground. I've literally had them for like a month and a half because I found them for such a good price. And these were in bloom when I got them. <laughs> Poor little guys who live in their life in a bucket. But here is a close up of the tag. And they get big. So these guys get six high by six wide. So I am going to put them on either side of the bench about three feet from the edge. Of course, the bench can always move up if they ever get huge, but they can take full sun. So that's the other thing is the shade in this part of the yard really doesn't start until about here. And then over, you know, under the tree is shady, but this is full sun, hence why I put my vegetable and my cut flower garden here. So anything I put here needs to be able to handle full sun. Then this guy, probably what I'm most excited about, is a Rose of Sharon, which is technically a hibiscus. This is a strawberry smoothie Althea, and look at those blooms. He gets big to y'all, eight tall by four foot wide. Like you could literally just do a whole hedge of these, but he is beautiful and he is getting ready to bloom. We want to get him in the ground before those buds open so that hopefully we won't lose any. So here's the goal. Today we are going to plant both of the Texas sage and the Rose of Sharon. And then tomorrow, I will keep working on weeding when it's not raining. <laughs> uh, it's going to take a while. I actually did 
the entire path. I did down the walkway to where the milkweed umbrella is. I did all the way around the car. Did all the path. Why I didn't put landscaping fabric under the gravel, I don't know. But you go ahead and weed all of this. And then the next step will be pea gravel path, compost, compost, pea gravel, finishing the path. It's a work in progress, y'all. Let's go ahead and get started planting these things because it's getting dark and it's gonna rain tomorrow and I just, I need to get these things in the ground so that they can benefit from the water. Let's do it. All right, so obviously it's still a work in progress, but we have one, two, three wonderful planted things. I am really, really excited because, ooh, y'all don't even know how long I've been waiting to plant these. So exciting. Still have to compost the area and finish weeding before it looks pretty. Ooh, you guys are falling over. <laughs> it's also going to be a while before these grow bigger, but it's the beginning of the season. They should be watered in really well with the rain the next couple days and establish once I get some compost because this soil is just the worst. They will be much happier and we'll see by the end of the season, they may even be drastically bigger. They're pretty quick growing plants. So Wish us luck. I'm going to go inside and get cleaned up again. It was supposed to rain all night, so I already took a shower. Came out. Oh, hummingbird. Oh, he's gone. You guys, he was beautiful. First hummingbird of the season. Oh, okay. It's a good day. It was supposed to be raining the rest of the night, so I already got cleaned up, took a shower, put on inside clothes, and now it is time to go do that all over again. So... We'll see y'all in the next video. If you want to go back to the beginning of the raised beds, I will leave that playlist here and I'll see y'all in the next video. Bye.